Hey guys, what's up? Um, good morning. Um, I want you guys to read. I'm reading First Peter chapter three. Um, I'm reading about wives and husbands. It's heavy in my spirit. It's definitely um a lot of people's marriage season, um, and within the body of Christ. So we're gonna just read these instructions the Lord gave us. Um, in First Peter chapter three. <clears throat> so let's go. So number chapter three, wives in the same way, be submissive to your husbands so that if any of them do not believe the word as in the word of God or the Lord, they may <clears throat> they may be won over without words by the behavior of their wives. For example, you are going to be an example when they don't of Christ when they don't really see one at that moment. OK, so when they see the purity and reverence of your lives. Your beauty should not come from the outward adornment, such as braided hair and the wearing of gold jewelry and fine clothes. So that's not why you're beautiful, women. Because, let's just be honest, that's going to fade. <laughs> you ain't always going to have all the bread. You're not always going to be young. We're all going to age. You know, we have women spending millions of dollars to look young and stop, you know, nature the laws of nature that you're going to age. So, <clears throat> because there's focus on vanity. So instead, it should be that of your inner self, the unfading beauty of a gentle and quiet spirit, which is of great worth in God's sight. I want to call out gentle, y'all. This is also um, a fruit of the spirit. That's a fruit of the spirit, right? Yeah, that's a fruit of the spirit, gentleness. <clears throat> so a lot of people wonder right now, like, what is femininity? And, um, God calls out some characteristics right here, gentle and quiet. <laughs> so if you were very loud, abrasive, um, overly need to be heard woman, um, you are in your masculinity. You're not in your femininity. And um, there's nothing wrong. You can be heard without being loud. I think, I don't know why, but like this generation thinks you got to yell to be heard. And no, you don't have to do that. Um, but anyway, let's keep reading, which is of great worth in God's sight. So women, feminine energy is beautiful and very much worthy in God's sight. Um. It's not, I know this world likes to make it small or like something that is whack, but feminine energy is beautiful. Okay, so for this is the way of the holy women of the past who put their hope in God used to make themselves beautiful. They were submissive to their own husbands, like Sarah, who obeyed Abraham and called him her master. You are her daughter, so we're under Sarah. Because obviously Abraham is, is the father of all nations. And if you do what is right and do not give way to fear. Okay. So we talked about the women. What is, God also gave stuff for the men. Husbands, in the same way, be considerate as you live with your wives. Be considerate. So meaning, don't make decisions and you didn't consult your wife. You didn't have a conversation. You just... Doing what you're doing, and, and she has to live by the consequences. That's that's whack. Husbands, you shouldn't be doing that. Treat them with respect. You're supposed to respect your wife. She shouldn't be having to ask you to respect her. She shouldn't be having to ask you to consider her um, as the weaker partner. I want to call out weaker partner because <clears throat> people misconstrue weaker. Women, um, as God designed us. We have very powerful characteristics and attributes of the man. And we have very powerful characteristics and attributes as a woman. Women, weaker, <clears throat> meaning sensitive. You are more sensitive to, to um, emotions. We are more sensitive to emotions. Mean, and this is not whack. This is a beautiful power of us. For instance, for example, women, you ever find yourself knowing how someone feels and they don't have to tell you? Have an actual logical verbal conversation. You can see it in their mannerisms or how they're behaving. You know 
especially women with their husbands, you, you know, the whole emotion he's feeling and not, and how you have to, um, help him without even having the conversation. What else is another way of women being very sensitive, just emotionally and no women, um, when you have your children, I've noticed this is real beautiful. Like the, the dad <laughs> don't have that emotion. <laughs> they're not, they're never going to have that, that level of emotional connection with the child as the mom. Um, you guys are emotionally tied to your child. So it's, it's very different. Like, um, I've, I've seen like videos of mothers knowing when their child is crying, knowing, or they can sense time wise when something's about to happen with their child or, it's very, it's very beautiful. Um, knowing when their child is hungry before they even hearing a physical signal. This, these are beautiful attributes of a woman. These are gifts. And this world tells you it's not a gift, but it's very, oh my goodness. Do you know how powerful that is women to have that ability to anticipate, anticipate, excuse me, emotions. Um, um, and unfortunately, we have a lot of women who they're manipulating this gift that God gave them. Um, they're knowing that they they have that gift and now they're using it to, you know, fulfill their will instead of God's will. Um, but, yeah, I just wanted to break down what is what is what do you mean weaker partner? You are more we are more sensitive to emotions. We are more sensitive. We can identify certain stuff that a man is just not going to comprehend unless a, a, a physical conversation, someone directly explains that to the man. Um, <clears throat> so let's keep going. And as heirs with you of the gracious gift of life, so that nothing will hinder your prayers. Um, basically, also going back to, you know, other scriptures in the word, I think it's James that talks about, um, please, someone please correct me, but I think it's James that talks about, you know, the man also gets more commandments about their wife to love their wife like they love the church, which is a very high commandment, meaning the husband must be willing to die for his wife. Because <laughs> that's what Jesus, that's what Jesus did for the church. Um, so a very high, a very high level calling for the man. In, in regards to protection and honor. Um, but I just wanted to go over this because, uh, you know, we have a lot of gender arguments right now I see in the world. And, um, you know, I, I wish some of us would pull it back into the word and what the word says. Women, um, vanity means nothing. You can have the flyest clothes, the cutest hair, um, there's always going to, I don't know why we obsess over physical beauty, but there's always going to be someone prettier and someone younger. Like you're setting yourself up for this endless cycle when you make your worth on vain things. It's always going to be someone richer. It's always going to be someone who has longer hair to braid or curlier hair or colorful hair or, you know what I'm saying? You just go down this rabbit hole <laughs> of unfulfilledness. So Ladies, you know, your beauty is within. Your beauty is within. Your beauty is your ability to um, thrive in your feminine energy. And men, you know, y'all got a lot of responsibilities. <laughs> y'all have a lot of responsibilities. You do. But, um, you know, it. you're the head, you know. The, you're the head. You guys lead. So... Please know, men, if you have a woman that's not submitted to you, and um, I encourage you to take a step, a, a extra step to see, okay, how am I not, um, where am I loving her like the church? Because women, <clears throat> we're the weaker vessel, so we follow suit of the head. Um, I'm not talking about these overly masculine women, so we're gonna ignore. You know, we we're gonna be we're gonna be clear. We're not about to play games. We're definitely not discussing these overly masculine women. We're talking about a woman that's in her feminine energy. Um, if you were with a masculine woman, I don't you know what to tell you. You know, but two ma two mass en energies is not gonna work. I'll just leave it at that. Um, <clears throat> but men, you're the head. You lead. Um, 
us women, we're designed to multiply. We're, we're, you know, you have, you get the house, but we make it a home. You have the seed, but we create the children. We create the, we, we incubate things and double it, you know, but it starts with you as the man. So you're the head. Your wife is basically the neck. She, she tells you which direction to turn. If she's a woman of God, she helps, she helps that, but you, you are leading her. You taking the steps, you feel me? And, um, don't let no woman tell you otherwise. <laughs> if you're dealing with a woman that's trying to tell you otherwise, that you're not the head, I don't know what to tell you. Um, but I don't know if you should be dealing with that. But I just wanted to go over this um, word, you guys, because I don't know. I just really feel like the feminine energy is dying and... um I'm, I, you know, I think it's being indoctrinated in schools and college and everything for us not to prior as women to not prioritize our feminine energy. Um, and it's, it's breaking down the household because you ain't going, you're not going to have the God ordained household with two masculine energies in the house. And is is you know it's just one of Satan's many attacks, but you know, ladies, just wanted to be vulnerable. Like it's okay if you was raised or the world, you know, the world ingrained in you, especially as a black woman, to be masculine. It's okay to take a step back and um get into your prayer closet and to pray about feminine energy. I do it very much consistently. Um. Because I know I have a, a spouse in my future, and I already know it's not a godly man. It's, it's not going to work with me being in my masculine energy. Therefore, I pray to the Lord constantly about um, teaching me what God, God ordained, you know, feminine energy is, what it looks like, um, how to not manipulate it, how to grow and bloom in it. Um, you know, asking the Lord to teach me how to be able to teach it to my children, uh, my daughter, if I have one, you know, claiming it, but, you know, in the future. And, um, you know, ladies, don't be that girl that's just like, oh, I'm, I'm masculine because the world made me this way. And, you know, you don't hold any accountability. You don't seek, you know, freedom. You don't seek freedom from that bondage. You don't seek God to help you with any of that. You just, oh, I'm masculine. The world made me masculine. Somebody got to deal with it. No one has to deal with anything. No one's going to. <laughs> and we have to keep it real, ladies. We don't like, we we can't be keep ass men and like this overly masculine energy and we don't like masculine energy. You ever, like, let's keep it real. Girl, girl talk time. You ever met like a really feminine, feminine woman? And how refreshing and beautiful that woman is. And have you ever met a masculine woman? And I'm not talking about men. I'm talking about women, ladies. You ever met a masculine woman? Don't she get on your nerves? <laughs> Don't that individual get on work your nerves? Let's keep it real. Let's just keep it truthful. That that woman work your nerves. She absolutely work your nerves. You can't stand being around her. You only got 10 minutes, 10, 15 minutes of holding a conversation with her and you got to go. And, you know, that feeling we feel, that's the same feeling that men feel. A masculine man and a masculine woman is not, that is not going to work. It's not in God's design. Two masculine energies is not in God's design. He made the masculine energy and he cre created the feminine energy to help the masculine energy. Um, so just take heed to this message, you guys. Uh, I think it's, um, I'm going to comment the actual scripture where it talks about um, husband loving your wives up to church and everything. I'm pretty sure it's in James. Uh, Lord, forgive me if I'm wrong and I keep quoting it, but I'll write it down in the caption. But First Peter 3, you know, husband and wives. I love y'all. Have a good day. Bye-bye.